Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So when we hear the term DevOps, the very first thing that comes to our mind is lots of tools. To be honest, that's actually true. In today's video, I will talk about five important things that you should definitely learn as a DevOps engineer before the end of 2025. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The first one and the most important one out there is Kubernetes. The reason is simple. Kubernetes is the future. Whether you're working on traditional software workloads, ML workloads, AI workloads, or even if you're working on large language models, Kubernetes is widely accepted as a target platform. Most of the companies today use Kubernetes to train their workloads and even to deploy their workloads. So if you haven't thought of learning Kubernetes, I would highly recommend you to get started with Kubernetes today. One thing that makes Kubernetes even more stronger is its open source nature. So if you try to look at Kubernetes, it has a lot of open source contributors and it allows people to extend its capabilities using its CRDs. Now, this is the reason why companies, instead of building an alternative to Kubernetes, companies are actually building on top of Kubernetes. For example, EKS, AKS, OpenShift, these are all distributions that are built on top of Kubernetes. And currently, competition is between the Kubernetes distributions, but competition is not between Kubernetes and other container orchestration engines. Of course, there are other container orchestration engines as well, but Kubernetes is, or these container orchestration engines are far, far behind Kubernetes. Now, while I say this, you know, while I say Kubernetes is the future, Kubernetes open source nature makes it even more stronger, but the learning path to Kubernetes is not easy. A lot of people get started with Kubernetes. They directly head to the Kubernetes documentation or they try to watch random videos on Kubernetes on the internet. So they find it very difficult. The learning path to Kubernetes is very simple. Start with Linux. You should understand the core concepts of Linux. Then head to containers. Only then head to Kubernetes. This is the ideal Kubernetes learning path. And even on the channel, as part of DevOps Zero to Hero playlist, I followed the exact learning path. Now, people also have questions around Kubernetes certifications. I would say Kubernetes certifications today are the only valued certifications in the space of DevOps. Every cloud platform also has their certifications, but they are not even near when compared to Kubernetes certifications. But make sure you complete your DevOps learning path, not just Kubernetes learning path. Start learning DevOps, complete your learning path, only then head to the certifications. Finally, Kubernetes ecosystem is growing day by day. You can see a lot of projects on top of Kubernetes. It can be Argo CD, it can be Istio, and it can be AI or ML projects like Qflow, which are gaining a lot of significance. What does this mean? This means Kubernetes is not going to be replaced in the near future. So if you learn a skill like Kubernetes, this is going to be for a long time on your resume. Second thing that I would recommend before 2025 is infrastructure as code. A lot of people today say, do we need to learn infrastructure as code? Because you know, cloud providers, provide their own automations. It becomes easy to create infrastructure today, but understand infrastructure as code is not only related to software applications, but today infrastructure as code is also related to AI infrastructure. You might be hearing companies like OpenAI, NVIDIA, companies around large language models are building huge AI infrastructure 
in US and outside United States. So this means there is going to be a lot of opportunities for infrastructure as code. Because this AI infrastructure is going to provide job opportunities and most of these job opportunities are going to revolve around creating the infrastructure and maintaining the infrastructure. So make sure you also gain this skill. And one tool that I would recommend even today is Terraform. Because the ecosystem of Terraform, HashiCorp, although they close sourced Terraform, there are alternatives like OpenTofu, which keeps Terraform alive and kicking. And although HashiCorp has made Terraform closed source, but if you are using Terraform to spin up the infrastructure, you can still go ahead and use it. So this is one reason why you should learn Terraform. Now people talk about alternatives of Terraform. I totally agree. You have strong alternatives like Pulumi. You have other alternatives like Crossplane. But personally, what I feel, these are not going to replace Terraform. But if something is going to replace Terraform in the future, I would say that would be SDKs. Cloud providers today provide their SDKs. For example, if you want to build infrastructure on AWS, you can use CDK. And personally, I believe these SDKs are going to play an important role because with AI, generating code has become very simple. Today, AI might fumble with Terraform, but if you want to create infrastructure using AI and using Python, by integrating AWS APIs, I believe that code would be more fault tolerant or that would give you more impressive results. So in the future, if something is going to replace Terraform, personally, I feel it's not going to pull me, it's not going to be cross plane, but it would be SDKs of the cloud platform. Anyways, before 2025, I would recommend you to learn Terraform and build infrastructure as code mindset. Now, the third thing that I would recommend is DevSecOps. Now, you might be hearing about recent security threats. It can be related to ML workloads. It can be related to AI workloads, large language models. You might be hearing about LLM poisoning. All of this can be avoided if your company adopts DevSecOps approach. It's very simple. Adopting CI, CD which most of the companies might already have today and building security within CI CD or building security within your existing DevOps practices is basically DevSecOps. So DevSecOps is going to be another key thing considering how security is going to play an important role in the world of AI and DevSecOps is not only restricted to software workloads. As I mentioned here, it's going to be related to MLOps. It's also going to be related to LLMOps. Because if you consider MLOps, just as an example, MLOps engineers will be building CI, CT, CD pipelines, right? Just like how DevOps engineers will build CI, CD pipelines. MLOps engineers would build CI, CT, CD pipelines and even these pipelines would involve DevSecOps practices in the future. Now, when it comes to CI CD, there are a lot of tools. So in the DevSecOps space, there are a lot of tools. I would recommend learn one or two. Don't get into that vicious circle and keep learning n number of DevSecOps tools. That's not going to help you. Learn something like GitHub Actions, learn something like uh, Argo CD or Flux CD. Learn something like uh, SNCC for your uh, container scanning. Probably learn OWSP, how exactly it works. Learn about SBOM. In all of these things, just learn one tool. I mean, instead of SNCC, you can go for something else. But don't keep learning n number of tools in this space because it's a vicious cycle. There are hundreds of tools in the same space. So you will end up wasting six to seven months just building your 
DevSecOps understanding. Now, the fourth skill, and again, very important thing, according to me, that you should definitely learn before 2025 is scripting. Companies today are looking for automation. Companies today are interested in automating as much as possible. It can be cost automation. It can be DevOps automation. It can be incident management automation, service incident management automation, anything. Companies today are interested in automation and AI is making automation even more powerful. However, I would recommend you to start with Bash. Some people start with Python, especially if you're coming from a DevOps background or if you're coming from not a non-IT background, I would not recommend Python. Start with Bash because Bash is simple and you can automate most of your DevOps day-to-day -day activities using Bash. Once you're comfortable and once you're confident with Bash, only then head to Python. Yeah, so I was talking about AI plus scripting. So again, I feel you know this is going to play very, very important role in the future because with the AI, scripting has become easy. You have a lot of AI plugins, you have a lot of AI extensions that can script your code in minutes of time today. So in the future, you might see this becoming even more simple and automation accessible for everyone in the space of IT. So these are four tools. Now, the fifth one, you know, something that is not actually a tool, something outside tool, and you should definitely learn this, is integration. This is one thing a lot of DevOps engineers miss. You know, they learn Kubernetes, they learn Docker, they learn from various sources. But when it comes to the integration, when it comes to implementing projects, they find it difficult. I believe this is the important skill, whether you are looking for an opportunity in some companies or if you're trying to build your profile as a freelancer, you should try to build as many integrations as possible. You should try to showcase your work through as many projects as possible. Only then you will have a bright future in the space of DevOps. As I told you, at the beginning of this video, DevOps is about a lot of tools, but all those tools without integration mean nothing. So if you have n number of tools in your resume, but if you can't integrate those tools, if you can't build a project, if you can't help your organization through those tools, then it's of no use. Even when you get to an interview, the very first question interviewer would ask you, Tell me how do you use Kubernetes on day-to-day -day basis or tell me how do you use these tools on day-to-day -day basis. So you will have to talk about your project. So make sure once you learn all of these concepts, build an enterprise level project, try to uh, create a hobby project, then try to complicate it. Even we have done this on our YouTube channel. So if you get to real time DevOps projects playlist on the channel, there are more than 30 projects you can pick up those projects and you can get started. So overall, these are five things that you should definitely learn as DevOps engineer before the end of 2025. Do you think I missed something? If you think so, do let me know in the comment section. See you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.